hell am I gonna do with these guys? How am I gonna actually make this sound sound good? But I think as an overall, uh, you know, it really didn't matter what was on the demos. I could uh, I could I could find enough musicians to make it make it sound great. Oh, the band name. <laughs> uh, well, there's a lot of things I thought about the band name, um, especially if it was abbreviated. You know, GFF, you know, gay female friend. I think that is pretty appropriate for for the band. You know, I think it really represents what you stand for. <laughs> Probably between acid jazz. A bit folky, blues mixed into it, and, I don't know, rave? See, I could definitely see you know, people doing a lot of drugs, you know, listening to, listening to your music. I would say that the uh, the skills of the band were pretty obvious once we started in the studio. You know, Max coming in as a drummer, uh, it's rare that you could find a drummer that could play 11 songs in two and a half days at the level that he played at. Um, you know, being a, uh, a drummer, it's uh, always interesting to me, you know, different styles and, and different setups and the way that people approach approach the drums and uh, Max seemed like he was on his game from the time that he walked in and on top of that having jet lag coming from Munich to Los Angeles and going right to work the next day uh, meant that his concentration was also there so as an overall I was I was so unbelievably impressed with with how he did in the studio then on top of it uh, being able to play with the click track and be able to play with feel and and be able to do everything that needs to be done on a record. I would say Daniel as a bass player, uh, when I found out that he was the drummer of the band and that Max came in uh, to play drums on the project so Daniel was able to play bass so we didn't have to do double duty, that uh, my first thought was you're going to have a drummer play the bass tracks, but then Daniel sat down and played, and it was actually incredible because the way that he locked in with the drums and how quickly the bass tracks went when we came down, when it came time to lay down the, the tracks, it was such an amazing process that we ended up doing the bass on 11 songs in less than a day and a half. And that was with no editing, going in, just recording. And if we had to replay a section, it was a one take process. When it came to uh, Rudy playing guitar, that uh, <laughs> when we were getting sounds, I mean, we went through quite a few different amplifiers and preamps and guitar amps and trying to find the, the right sound that would work for him and his playing style. But when it came down to, to actually recording the parts, he was very quick. And uh, everything from how he gripped the guitar to his just overall technique, um, anytime that we had to go back and maybe uh, work on a section that uh, if we needed to try something different, he was always full of ideas. There was never a time where he really had to think too much about um, oh, this isn't working, what am I going to do? And even if that came up, if I suggested a part, he would take it and he would turn it into his own thing, which was, which was absolutely brilliant. So that means he was always thinking while he was playing. And again, his timing and precision for stylistically for the project was very, very fitting. So again, very impressed. The first day getting Tom 
on the microphone was, uh, you know, of course, never working with, with Tom before, um, I think that you have to build a relationship with the singer. They, I think, have the, the toughest job. If they get worn out or their vocal cords get, get worked too hard, you can't, can't go to the local music store and replace a vocal cord. So if you have to work on a vocal over and over and over again to try to get the right feel and the right lines and everything, it's a, it gets a little bit, uh, uh, there's a lot of wear and tear on the voice. But Tom started to sing, and <laughs> the first take, he, sang, he sings the song down from top to bottom, from beginning to end, and it was virtually almost a perfect take. You know, what we worked on was uh, enunciation and uh, how to say certain lines and maybe changing some vocal melodies and whatnot, but he was so quick and his tuning was spot on all the time. It was never that, oh, I'm gonna have to go back and auto-tune this or, or have to double this because his tone didn't sound very good. He sounded so good from the beginning of the session to the end of the session. And on top of that, with as many songs as we did, which was you know, 11 songs for the whole record, and all the harmonies and all the background vocals. Uh, he never once wore out. He took care of himself and uh, was very professional the whole time that he was in the studio. And that goes with the whole, you know, for the whole band. Everybody came and approached the project as a professional. And I think that's what allowed us to be able to record the whole record in 18 days. And not only doing a record that quick with the quality and how much was put into the record on the playing and the production and all the little things that, uh, that come along with it, but we were still able to go out to lunch every day and be able to hang out and it was always very relaxed. And that was probably one of the first times in a long time that I was able to do that with a band. So it wasn't all work, all work every single day. We were able to come in, enjoy the process. You have amazing players that knew exactly what to do, how to do it, be able to work together as a team, and be able to come up with a, uh, with a record that hopefully people will listen to and like.